So, Fairy Merzo, despite its modest appearance, is a truly universal device. It combines fully balanced components – a headphone amplifier, a fully analog preamp and a DAC. But let's start from the beginning. Unfortunately, the cases of all fairums aren't made from solid metal pieces of aircraft-grade aluminum, which is becoming the standard in high-end audio today. The body of Erzo is thick, rigid band metal sheets. Yes, it doesn't look as luxurious as, for example, the Orander, but as soon as you touch it, you feel that this is a solid thing. The front panels of the fairums are already famous because no one else has done it. Despite the fact that the thick front panel is somehow modest, it is easily recognized thanks to this rusty part. And it's real rust, but it was varnished, of course. Thanks to this insert, each copy of Ferrum will be unique in its own way. On the front panel there are two headphone outputs, a 6.3mm and a balanced Pentacon 4.4mm jack, a small LED, a 4-input switch, it also turns off the power in the center position, a gain switch and a large volume knob that controls a precision 4-channel Alps blue potentiometer, nothing else. Yes, quite modestly for a modern high-end deck. Now even cheap Chinese devices are full of touchscreen displays with any information on them. Speaking of luxuries, only the Ferrum logo with adjustable backlighting is here. Many will be outraged that for such money there is not even a tiny screen here. What will I have to tell my wife about the thousands of dollars spent? And how can I brag to my friends who bought Chinese deck amplifiers for a penny? My friends with Chinese decks. Look, I have a touchscreen OLED display of 100 million Hz and a quintillion colors. At this time I. Look, I have a rust here. How did it happen? Moreover, Ferrum makes a power supply named Hipsus with a color display. And then a deck, an amplifier, switches and all this, well, like needs a display. But to be honest, I'll say this. Yes and no. Yes, obviously I would like to have a display on such a device. It would make Erzo visually brighter and would help save it from the main drawback in my eyes. A completely blind volume control. The only point G that is on the knob will be visible to you only on a clear, fine day at the window. In other cases, you'll have to try hard to find it. Not everyone can, as we know. Since I am a night dweller, I often stay up late, this hurts me, and I begin to envy the colorful Chinese displays with the volume level info. Damn it, the LEDs on the knobs of old music systems helped us a lot in their time. I already had one painful traumatic experience with it. In all my cars, I got used to the fact that I knew the volume level from the numbers on the display. Well, that is, conditional 25 is a comfortable volume, and 32 is when you want to listen to it louder, etc. But everything changed when I bought a damn Mercedes. I started to deal with its audio system and couldn't figure out where it shows the volume level. I even called my friend who had a similar car. Bro, please, tell me how to turn on the volume level on the display, where the f*** is it? And he answered me, Eugen, it doesn't show the volume level in any form. But how should I? No way, bro, you must do it only by ear, humble yourself. So for the first month my eye twitched when I got into the car with the same thought, how dare you? But then the Germans won, I got used to it. Perhaps if not for this story I wouldn't have come to terms with Ferrum's volume knob, who knows. But at the same time, no, I actually don't need a display, and on the scales where conditional beauty is on one waiting pen and a more purist design on the other, I am generally more pleased that there is nothing superfluous here and it doesn't negatively affect the sound, and I didn't ever pay for it. But one of its obvious advantages is impeccable ergonomics. 
you simply have no chance of getting confused. In addition, all the knobs here are grippy and comfortable. Plus, they are all made of metal. There is no plastic as it may seem here. This is ferrum. In practice, you can always control the volume precisely, even though you can't see how much you've turned the knob. Furthermore, its only interactive element is the LED that changes from orange to blue or green when it's broadcasting Leper MQA Studio files to you. On the back panel, it already has something to brag about. Balanced XLR outputs, RCA inputs outputs for the analog part, optics, coaxial and a modern USB-C that accepts MQA and PCM streams up to 32-bit 384 kHz and DSD-256. For me, this is its main input, because I use it with a laptop. All connectors, of course, are of excellent quality. And there is a USB-C to USB-A cable included, which is important these days. However, I no longer have USB-A in my computer, so I had to first buy a USB-A to USB-C adapter, but then I realized that I have pretty decent USB-C cables from my Samsung SSDs. I use one of them. Further to the right, you'll find a bypass switch. This will turn off volume controls on its outputs, the dimmer wheel of its logo, the trigger and two power sockets. The small one is default for connecting its external power supply and the large one is the ferrum power link for those who fork out for a proprietary ferrum Hipsos power supply. Personally, I really regret that I didn't fork out for the Hipsos. Together they look like a killer of all existing Chi-Fi headphone equipment. Although, in fairness, it should be noted that justifying the purchase of Hypsos in the eyes of your wife will be much more difficult if you don't stock up on an extra box of Tiffany. Therefore, either be content like me with a remote power supply unit on the floor or go work more. Ok, it's not all that important. Now let's talk about what Erza is actually bought for. The fact is that inside it is a great balance headphone amplifier built using four LT1210 op amps with a very high quiescent current of the output stage which allows it to remain class A at medium volume levels. That is guys, if you're not going to destroy your ears as soon as possible, you'll listen to it all the time in class A. You know what it means. At the same time, the amplifier works with an amount of dope that exceeds the usual requirements. On balance output it produces 6 watts into 50 ohms, and here a dynamic range of 130 dB and extremely low THD. It's just a superb headphone amp that you won't hear in a good way. Plus it has analog line outputs and in theory it can be a preamp, which I also use. I connect it to my FAST Taurus amp directly to the input of the power amplifier by passing the preamp circuits. Many of course immediately had a question about its sibling amplifier named OR. From the user's point of view, Erzo differs from OR in that it doesn't have an analog XLR input, only output. And on the front panel, a balance headphone output isn't XLR, but Pentacon. Well, the output power of OR is a little higher, to be honest. But Erzo has something that OR doesn't have, a deck. And it really is a very cool deck, because it was built by the same people who made amazing MindTech decks for 10 years in a row. Here the converter built on the pretty famous Sabre 9028 Pro chip. And although it has long been obvious to everyone that it isn't so much the chip that determines the level of the deck, but the overall implementation. But I can hear right now how part of the audience rolls their eyes, saying that this isn't the top and not the newest of their chips. Why such money then? Audio files are bred for money and all that. But here's how it's built. Ferrum's engineers developed their own data transmission system. While most decks use standard off-the-shelf solutions, here the signal is processed using its own proprietary library. In other words, they completely wrote the algorithm for receiving asynchronous data via USB to the ARM processor under the signals of their high-precision clock by passing the standard processing algorithm. And only then, accurately accepted, these data are sent to the 9028 Pro chip via internal I2S bus probably the most advanced today. 
It has a really great deck inside, one of the best in its class in my opinion. About the power supply is also interesting point. All this can be powered from an included power supply. Here it is a switched mode unit. This is a slightly modified PSU from OR. There is also double filtering of the input and output and independent power buses for the right and left channels. But besides this, Erzo can be powered from a Hypsos Monster power supply via proprietary feedback bus, which can directly control the voltage of the motherboard, unlike an included power supply that only controls the voltage of the connector. I have Erzo connected, like I said, via USB-C to my MacBook Pro 16, which I use as a source with Tidal and Cobos mostly. Along with them are new ODZ MM500 planar magnetic headphones and a pair of Martin Logan Motion 35 XTI bookshelf speakers connected via Fast Taurus 5060 amplifier. And for the time that I have had them, and this is a couple of months, I can say this about the sound. Firstly, Erze is a very meticulous device. With good headphones you'll hear everything and with speakers you'll hear a lot. It's able to extract very subtle details, which won't be lost behind more powerful, weighty sounds. Despite the fact that it's so detailed, there is no dryness in its sound at all, just as there is no warmth. It doesn't show itself directly, it is a transparent device in a good sense. And that is exactly what it will sell to you. It's quite an intoxicating feeling to hear everything through headphones at this level. As for the setup with speakers, if we compare the sound of Taurus on its own and as a power amplifier along with Erzo, then the second option clearly wins. Firstly, with a much cooler deck you get more detail and the overall sound has a more analog, more liquid signature. The deck built into the Taurus, although very pleasant in itself, uh, loses outright in direct comparison. It sounds more digital, so to speak. Plus, Erzo noticeably more confidently builds the scene in depth. For example, I would recommend you to the latest album The Day Out of Time by the Bristol band The Degrees, which in an interesting way mixed soul, jazz and Bristol trip-hop in its sound. Who would have thought that the Bristol sound would go to jazz like that? Nevertheless, it turned out well and uh, this positive effect is quite strongly supported by the quality of the recording. The Bristol-based duo of producer Charlie Bierman and singer-songwriter Isha Campbell recorded at Welsh legendary Rockfeld Studios, a farmhouse home to nearly every British star from Queen, Black Sabbath and Motorhead to the Stone Roses, Oasis and Coldplay. As for the degrees, on headphones you are directly immersed in an ocean of sounds built from even smaller sounds, which in turn are heard at the atomic level. I understand that in words this sounds like mechanical audiophilia, but it is absolutely not so. On the contrary, you feel the infinity of sound depth, the absolute absence of limits, restrictions and resolution. In the presentations of the speakers, this isn't so striking due to the nature of the speakers themselves. In comparison to headphones, they give a more flavorful, fatter sound in the lower half of the frequency range. But the ribbon tweeter remains absolutely accurate and precise, showing how detailed this album is. Campbell's vocals on the blinded track are so close and real that there seems to be no chain of complex transformations of different devices between you and her, from the microphone in the studio to the headphones on your head. Her voice softly envelops you from all sides. You sit with such a surprised face that it arouses suspicion among the household. Look, the dad got enough of his audiophilia again. By the way, on this album there are bongos that sound so natural, materialized, that I even force myself to hear them inside my head, well, I have headphones. I still hear them in front, a little to my left. It's impressive, of course. As for heavy music, Erzo is just what you need. It is very thorough, so rock music is served extremely boldly. The new album by French rockers Clone just sounds great. Moreover, I noticed that I prefer to turn the gain switch on such music to the right, this way the sound acquires more dynamics, 
Subjectively, it seems to me that in the zero position of the gain, Erzo is a little more restrained at the edges of the frequency range and especially on the mid bass punch. This is just nitpicking, but I've clearly understood over the past couple of months that heavy music suits me better when the gain switch is turned to the right. The new clone album performed by Erzo is very detailed and weighty. The sound is very fast, although the album itself is not that super fast, but where they perform fast you can clearly hear it. On this album the overall melancholy and unhurried narration is often accompanied by very energetic riffs, and here Erza very clearly differentiates between fast riffs and vicious ones. Everything here is always laid out on the shelves. Everything is in focus, both accents and background are clearly defined. From this I almost always have the feeling that I am listening to it at the maximum quality. The only thing I've noticed is that in some of the most intense parts the guitars sometimes lose their sharpness and take on a slightly warmer tone. And thanks to this character it's extremely cool to listen to electronic music. Almost everything electronic sounds amazing through Ferrum. Just then the new album of the M83 band, Fantasy, finally appeared and it's a complete ecstasy. It is one hour of extensive, very atmospheric electronics with vintage vibes. I don't even want to dissect this music, it's just good as a phenomenon. The sound of this album is built very impressively in terms of space. It is multifaceted. Everything materialized from under the other in front of you. And therefore, on the one hand, you have absolute ecstasy from the melody, and on the other, all this sounds much more convincing precisely thanks to all these audiophile things, the quality of sound rendering. At such moments, no matter how much I share the music lover mantra, music is more important than sound, here I say for sure, on the worthless equipment, the buzz from this album will be much less. You just won't hear how much magic is going on in all this. This is what we are all chasing, this is what we want to get by spending money on expensive equipment. As for Earth itself, yes, it's certainly not an ideal device. It has compromises, there are annoying things, it looks a bit boring, like a Trabant ventilation control unit. But what it does with sound is up to the highest possible standards. What you get in terms of quality doesn't match its slow key appearance at all. If you translate from audiophile to consumer, then its sound, pardon the vulgar metaphor, is absolutely luxurious, and this is the objective reason why it settled on my desk. Whatever I listen to, Erzo delivers it very confidently, and what may be even more important is that it manages my super precise Odyssey headphones with the utmost accuracy. Yes, for this amount of money you can buy a device with a more sophisticated case, with a color display and bunch of everything. But will it have the same uncompromising sound? This is a question you should ask yourself.